Fake news has become a trending topic over the last few weeks amid claims that media outlets are awash with fabricated stories. Trump's surprise success in the US elections has even been linked to false reports emanating from Russia. The Washington Post claims that it has the proof, but it turns out that its article is full of fakes itself. Artie Zagor Piskunov delved into the story. Fake news has become increasingly maddeningly disturbingly popular. The Pope endorsing Trump? Fake. There's so much active misinformation. Clinton linked to crimes committed by Anthony Weiner? Also fake. Fake news. Everybody's talking about it. Now, even the trendsetters. It has everything to grab your attention. Propaganda in the headlines, and RT is the main perpetrator. It appears this is how the Washington Post sees it being done. Increasingly sophisticated propaganda machinery, teams of paid human trolls, entire networks of websites and social media accounts, thousands of bots, all aimed at penetrating and undermining democracy. But no matter how many times one may repeat the word propaganda in an article, and it's 20 in this case, yes, we count it. Perhaps it's the Washington Post itself that's been spreading fake news. Take their line about RT using the crooked Hillary hashtag. Guess what? We didn't. And we pointed it out. Here's their response. We have determined that the reference to RT using the crooked Hillary hashtag was, as you suggested, an error. We have fixed the online version of the story and written a correction. Thank you for bringing this to our attention. Honest mistake, but how many of these could there be? Washington Post columnist Josh Rogan went on CNN claiming Brexit was sponsored by Russia. You're saying we're duped by Russian money being funneled in and it had nothing to do with their own ideas in the UK? Now, I, I love wow. watching you come to, the, come to the realization of the truth of the situation. Also, the respected paper claimed Hillary Clinton was poisoned when she fainted during the 9-11 commemoration service by Russia. Proof? Well, don't you remember, Putin poisoned Litvinenko. He knows this stuff. These fakes haven't gone unnoticed, though. But can it be that those who are accused of fake news are often those who simply present an alternative point of view? There's a whole black list for so-called propaganda websites, yours truly included, supplied directly to the Washington Post by an unknown group of researchers. A group which lists boycott Russia today and Russia lies among its allies. So much for independent journalism. I find this extremely worrying that all of a sudden we have to be um, listening to groups with dubious pedigrees, groups that purport to tell us what the difference is between truth and lie. And it, it, it's highly suspicious and completely inappropriate to a country that uh, lives under the First Amendment. But who cares if the news is cooked, as long as fiction remains more interesting than real news? Yegor Piskunov, RT. Now to discuss fake news and the website that compiled that blacklist of outlets branding them Russian propaganda. Please to say I'm joined live now. Daniel McAdams is on the line. He's the executive director of one of those Russian propagandists, allegedly. Outfits the Ron Paul Institute. I wonder, Daniel, if that implies that Ron Paul himself is a Russian propagandist. Um, you, you can comment on that. But as the executive director of the Institute, how do you feel about this, this blacklisting and this accusation against your organization? Well, how, how ironic it is that the Washington Post uses the exact same tactics and techniques that they falsely accuse us of using. They put out the most bizarre conspiracy theories about some crazy Russian plot that goes through all of these several hundred websites, including the Drudge Report, which is a huge site, uh, with absolutely no evidence for this conspiracy theorizing. Uh, what's funny is they say we're fake news. But we proudly stand behind every single article we publish. While the Washington Post was publishing lies about how the Iraq war would be a cakewalk, Ron Paul was down on the floor of Congress saying it would be a disaster. Who ended up being right? Uh, the same thing was true with Libya and the others. So the real fake news is the Washington Post. Uh, not the Ron Paul Institute. Yeah, the people behind this website, they're extremely brave. They haven't revealed their identities. They give pretty sketchy explanations of the methods uh, they use, some reference to algorithms and automated analysis. Um, <laughs> do you really believe that anyone is convinced by these claims? Well, the title itself of the Washington Post article is a real giveaway. It says something on the order of uh, uh, Russian propaganda uh, fueled uh, uh, Trump's victory, experts say, or something like this. Well, who are the experts? As you point out, 
They don't say. They're absolutely anonymous. This website, Propaganda or Not, doesn't reveal who's behind them. It doesn't reveal the researchers. Uh, it doesn't reveal uh, the executive director. It doesn't reveal, re reveal the methods uh, that are used. So the only evidence that they have pronounced, well, first of all, they're factually wrong. They listed the Ron Paul Institute as a right-wing website, which I'm sure would be news to our uh, board of directors, <laughs> including Dennis Kucinich, who's never been accused of being right-wing. Uh, but then they go on to, there are two pieces of evidence that we are a Russian propaganda outlet. One is a piece in the Washington Free Beacon, which is owned by arch neocon Bill Kristol's son. And in that attack piece on the Institute, uh, the main point was that I criticized uh, Washington's attack on Libya, pointing out that things are a lot worse there uh, than they were before the attack. That was one. And the other was a piece we ran by Pepe Escobar, a well-known international correspondent, who simply pointed out that it's not a very good idea for NATO to be putting its troops on Russian borders. Now, if that's Russian propaganda, then I think they have a very th low threshold. I mean, I've been slightly glib about this, this whole thing, but I try to be independent, but sometimes th things have got so many holes in them, you just can't help but having a, a poke and exposing the, the ludicrous nature of it. Um, it brings me on to this topic of fake news that's become uh, quite a big thing recently. Um, there's this blame game, it seems, going on in the mainstream, mainstream uh, media. What's the cause? Do you think this is just a way of trying to get rid of competition? Well, it's, it's pretty funny, actually, for all of their millions of dollars. And we had hoped when Jeff Bezos took over the Washington Post that he would clean shop. Unfortunately, it's gotten worse. For all their millions of dollars at the Washington Post, they're afraid of a tiny little think tank called the Ron Paul Institute that happens to tell the truth. Uh, you know, I, I really wear that with a badge of pride. And uh, quite frankly, I would say thank you, Washington Post, because we can go back to our supporters and even our donors and say, look who thinks that we're very influential. We really appreciate it. So we're doing something right, I think. Um, if you look at the, the logic behind Prop or Not's decision for putting people on the blacklist, it's interesting. They say they don't do it without good reason. They cite support for Brexit as one of their reasons for blacklisting people. Somehow, the suggestion seems to be that if you supported Brexit, then you are linked to the Kremlin. How, how do you respond to that? Well, the same they, they, they did with Brexit, they did with Trump, but obviously as a 501c3, the Institute, first of all, takes no position on referenda overseas. Our whole point is to not intervene uh, in, in issues overseas. And we obviously took no sides on Trump versus Hillary. We supported neither candidate. So there's just, there's just absolutely nothing to it. But I think if anything, this shows, uh, and WikiLeaks shows, that the mainstream media is unbelievably corrupt. We've seen what they've done behind the scenes. They have been exposed as being the absolute corrupt tools of the elites. And that is something that they are going to have to deal with and lashing out at organizations and, and, and websites and institutes that tell the truth is not the way to, to, to save themselves with the American people. Daniel, good to speak to you. Our guest, Daniel McAdams, Executive Director at the Ron Paul Institute. Thank you.